In this episode of the Latino Business Report, we have a return guest, Angel Munoz. Angel is a serial entrepreneur. He is the founder, president, and CEO of Mass Luminosity, a global research and technology firm based in Dallas, Texas. Angel was a guest on this podcast about six months ago. During that podcast, we talked about his new invention, Beacon X, a state-of-the-art encrypted video communications platform that provides ultra HD video quality. To find out more about this new technology that Beacon X offers, you can listen to episode 28 of this podcast. Six months has passed since we last talked to Angel. He is here today to tell us about the new mind-blowing technology he and his team have invented and to announce the launch of Beacon Max in October of 2022. Beacon Max has newly invented technology that will revolutionize the way the world communicates. The future is now and is being brought to you by Angel Munoz and Beacon Max. Welcome to the Latino Business Report. This podcast covers business, people, and issues of the day from a Latino perspective. The Latino Business Report is brought to you by TAMAC, the Texas Association of Mexican-American Chambers of Commerce. TAMAC is the leading Hispanic business organization in Texas since 1975. Now for your host, J.R. Gonzalez. And welcome to another episode of the Latino Business Report. Today, we are so fortunate we have back with us the president and CEO of Mass Luminosity, Angel Munoz. Angel, how are you doing today? Oh, JR, it's good to see you again. I'm doing fantastically well. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Angel, I'm so glad uh, you agreed to come back on, on the podcast. We really enjoyed the last time you were here. And in Thank fact, I, I'm here to tell you that your last visit, which uh, for those who don't follow this podcast as much as they should, episode number 28, to this date is the best listened to and downloaded podcast that I've that I've had. So thank wow, you very thank much you. for that. There was yeah. some great inf- there's some great information in that. And uh, if you guys get a chance after you listen to to this one, please go back to episode number 28 on the podcast list. You can find it anywhere where you listen to podcasts, or you can go to latinobusinessreport.com, go to our playlist and play that because that one really came out good and gave us a lot of background about what we're going to talk about today. And that's Angel, that's your new product, Beacon X, and then you're coming out with Beacon Max. So for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, Angel, can you just tell us a little bit about what Beacon X is? And then I don't want to spend too much time on it. They can go back to episode number 28. What I'm interested is where we're going and the next exciting things that you have coming up. Well, I can tell you in just one line what Beacon uh, and so Beacon X is the free version of Beacon and Beacon Max is going to be the paid version It's not launched yet. And in one line, I would say that Beacon is the next generation of visual communication. Absolutely. I mean, just the Beacon X, the free version, I've been using the free version for a while. Thank you very much for making it free, by the way. But it's just amazing. I mean, the, the clarity, the Christmas, the audio, the visual. Uh, the things you can do with it, the convenience of using it, of not having to, how do I put it? It's so simple, it's almost hard. It, I, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it took me a little while to get used to it because you created that thing where almost anybody can 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 deal with it without a lot of the bells and whistles and things you have to do with other video platforms. Yeah, J- JR, uh, actually that's, that's, what, that's one of the biggest challenges, what you're mentioning that we have with Beacon is that people unfortunately have been trained by uh, other products to overthink and to try to think everything has to be so mechanical, so tedious and so complicated. Then when they have extreme simplicity they kind of get lost for a little bit until they go, wait a second, this is doing all this for me. For example, I'll give you one quick example. Um, When you you reschedule or schedule a call on Beacon, Beacon automatically sends an email to the person in the background. You don't even know that it happened. It, It tells you on the bottom, it says an email was sent, but you don't even have to do that. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to actually say, hey, send an email to these person or send that it's automatic and sent in the background. And a lot of people uh, question us and go, wait a second, 
you know, I'm not sure if that e if that email went out or whatever. <laughs> and, and, and we have pretty much a flawless record at delivering those invitations. So the only reason somebody may not get it is it could end somebody's spam just because of whatever reasons. And mm -hmm. so if somebody, if you're, if you're, if you're creating an invitation and it sends the email automatically and they say they never received it, just ask them to check their spam folder and nine times out of 10, there it is. So the simplicity of it all. And for those of you who have not yet listened to episode number 28, a little bit of background as we have Beacon X, the free version, uh, which was created, what, about a year ago? Now? It, uh, yeah, it was It was launched in July of last year. Yes, correct. July of last year. This thing right now has about 625,000 users. And the simplicity of it, and just the clarity, if if you're accustomed to using other video platforms, and I'm not going to mention any names, you will find that this one is not only clearer, crisper, easier to use, and what I really like about it, it's totally encrypted from end to end, and your privacy level is at, I mean, you got, you're secure, right, Angel? I mean, you're secure when you're on this thing. Right. That was a, that was, um, so we didn't bolt that on later. Uh, it was from the ground up that we, um, you know, that we were concerned with people's uh, privacy and safety. And uh, they're two, you know, as I explained on, on that previous episode, they're distinct from each other, uh, but but they actually um, they actually both accomplish the same thing, which is to provide people a sense of privacy and security when they're on a beacon call. And uh, and that's we recently um, we we've recently been organizing the comments that we receive, and privacy even with an audience and the general public that is just unconcerned about privacy is beyond the crystal clear, the no, the no stuttering, the no lag, no grainy video, all that. But privacy is one of the things, and security are one of the things that, that gets mentioned a lot as one of the reasons people choose Beacon over other platforms. Well, the privacy is important because I know at one point when the pandemic first started, there was people hacking into some of these platforms, they were crashing them, they're causing all kinds of trouble. And one of the things I know as a user, I don't want all my information going to someplace else or, or being sold. And I won't mention any names, but I understand that there's another company out there that uh, that's a, that's a video that has a video platform that they were selling their lists, and they ended up getting sued for it. And that price zoomed up to about a one hundred million dollar lawsuit. Didn't mention any names um, that that occurred. So that's what. I really appreciate about Beacon is that you feel not only secure in your transmission, but the privacy and you know that your information that you use or your email address is not going to be sold to somebody else. Yeah, right. And, and you know, more pernicious to a certain degree beyond the fact that they lost that while well, they settled that lawsuit for almost 100 million. And I think a little bit more pernicious is that the year before that, the Federal Trade Commission actually sanctioned them and, and put them on notice that they were not to say that their calls were encrypted anymore because they were not. And, uh, and, and they, had to, uh, they had to wind down the way that they present that and, and, and on pressure from, from the federal government, um, you know, that they say, you know, they made this whole thing about them being private when they're not. And, uh, you know, let's not talk about them. Let's talk about Beacon. On the Beacon world, uh, we're just simply not in the business of selling people's information, period. So that's not our business. That's not even uh, if anybody wanted to see our business plan, we would send it to them. And there's no consideration for the selling uh, or, or, you know, or trading of information from our clients. It's not going to happen. We're just not in that business. Good to know. Good to know. Now, before we move on to the next thing, just have to ask, when we're talking about the clarity. I mean, we're talking HD quality on, that we're on right now. Um, how many frames per second are you moving at and and recording at, and compared to some of the other some of your other folks out there that do the same thing? Right. Uh, so uh, you know, we use a variable algorithm for it. So it depend. This is uh, Jr. I'll give you best case scenarios, uh, but they can vary depending on you know, bandwidth and device that you're using. If it's a, a device that's five years or older, you know, the, the quality will, will suffer somewhat. 
but we can do up to 8K resolution, although right now we've deployed wow. 4K, and we can do that at 30 frames per second. So what that gives you is a cinematic experience. And you see frame, uh, frames per second slowdowns when the connection is not quite perfect uh, to our servers. And so we start then, you know, slowing down the frames per second. But in ideal circumstances, as you've experienced yourself, JR, you have basically, it's like going to the movies. You have a movie that's playing at 30 frames per second, uh, you know, in front of you, because that's how it's recorded. Some are mm -hmm. in 60, but most are in 30. And, um, and, and, you know, and you have, um, you know, we have also the same aspect ratio. So as a movie, so we, we, we go full screen and, you know, a lot of people don't like the fact that your background is part of the conversation. And that's, that, that, that's an issue for some people. And that's why they prefer other platforms, but we like that. And that's why our motto is when real matters. Uh, so we don't really want to be when, you know, when cartoons matter, or when fantasy matters or anything like that. We just want to be when, when real matters. And that's why we call it crystal clear technology is the, it's the term that we're using for it. It's, it's not only, you know, it's frames per second, it's resolution, it's aspect ratio, it's color saturation. It's a, a lot of, a lot of thinking went into how do you feel when you're on a beacon call? Does it feel more natural to you? Are you fatigued like other platforms afterwards? Or do you feel to a certain degree that you're actually talking to that person? If you feel that way, we've accomplished our mission. Well, I definitely think you've accomplished your mission. Let me back up. I got you, you were talking there. I had a couple questions. Did I hear you say you had the capability of going up to 8K? Yes. As soon as there's a camera that can that can support 8K resolution, we uh, uh, Theodor Atroshenko, who, who is our, our our CTO, and have our eyes on the Sharp. Apparently, is going to be the first one to release one. We will show. Uh, we'll be the first uh, video conferencing platform in the world to do a call in 8K resolution. So Absolutely. you, so you've developed the technology for 8K resolution before a camera is even on the market for it. That's correct. Wow, that's correct. <laughs> that's pretty cool stuff. Hey? Let me tell you. Thank you. Thank that, you. That, well, you know, our, the, you you said in the beginning uh, of your call something interesting that really resonates with me. Is we're not going to talk about the past so much. I want to talk about the future. Well, this is you know, there, the easiest way to predict the future is to invent it. And that's what we wanted to do. We, you know, we don't know if a K resolution is going to be a big thing, but we're just assuming that it is. So we made our technology work through that. And the credit goes to 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 Theodore on that one. Uh, you know, we're both super fans of technology, and, and and you know, I come from an era, Jr., where you know the first television that I ever watched was black and white, and there were four channels on television. And for me to be at the forefront of bringing technologies that are so futuristic into reality, this is a dream come true for anyone, uh, regardless of who they are. And, and I just think that it's just a natural evolution of the technology to take it to 8K. 4K is impressive. Well, but, and, and, yeah, and, I already, I mean, and by the way, JR, I, I, even, I even bought an 8K, 8K television. So that when when we have it, that I, I can see it in 8K. <laughs> when that day finally comes, okay. Yeah. So well, I, I I probably have one of the first 8K res, uh, resolution televisions that came out. It's a Samsung television that came out on the, on the market, and I bought it just because of Beacon. Not, there's no content in 8K in, in, at all yeah. in streaming services. So. Well, kudos to your foresight. I, I couldn't even imagine what 8K looks like. I mean, it just uh, yes, yeah, it, it, you can't wear makeup. That's for sure because that's that's be, <laughs> wow. That is that is beyond my comprehension. Now, and, and Angel, we're not we're not that far different in age. And I I remember when our family got the first color television, and yeah. I was the remote control. Dad would go, "Me home, go, right. go change get the up, channel." Go, there you go. Yes, sir. I, the best invention for me was actually, and I don't know if you remember how big and, and boxy the first remote controls were, and I thought 
Kevin had just arrived at my house because I didn't have to be the remote control anymore. <laughs> or, or did you did you ever did you have to get the things where you had to hold the rabbit ears until the reception? Oh, of course, got, you got to wiggle the whole TV sometimes or bang it on the side. And then your dad would say, "Just just stay there, just stay there," you know. And I go, "Geez, you're killing me here, Dad." There is the incredible story of being alive in such an incredible times that a person that actually experienced that grew up with that technology where you had to bag it on the side for it to actually tune in. And now uh, we are at the forefront of bringing in the next generation of video conferencing. Well, That's you, unbelievable. You, That's you, it's just incredible. What incredible times. With your technology, Angel, you've not only not the next time, a quantum leap, if you will, in technology of what, what you've been able to accomplish. Now, yeah. just, and I want to get into the, to the uh, AI bit, but a little birdie told me, and that little birdie was blue. So <laughs> did I hear right that somebody offered you like $80 million? Not for like. Beacon? Not like. They offered us $80 million in, uh, for Beacon. Um, and it's it was, not even it's fully developed yet. No, not, it's not. Uh, well, you know, we, so there's some, um, there's some disclosure that I can give about that in the fact that we have two products. We have Beacon, uh, that's the product that we're talking about. And then we also have Beam. And, and they're separate products, um, but they're very much based on the same technology. And the company that was interested in, in purchasing us wanted both. Beam, that is completely undeveloped, basically not even a prototype, JR, and Beacon that already, as you said, has 600 and over 625,000 users that really came uh, through word of mouth and, and continues to grow at a, you at don't, a you don't advertise rate. at all, really. No, not really for all practical purposes. Yeah. No. And so anyway, and, and this company, um, uh, approached us back in December of, of uh, last year and, um, said that they were going to make an offer for us and would we value the company? So, uh, my son, <clears throat> um, works for one of the uh, large consulting companies in the United States, and he had access to their database, and he offered to, to lead that project and see what would be, can be valued based on other um, valuations on similar stage and similar development stage, what will we be valued? And he realized that Beacon at that point was valued at 50 million. So, uh, so we gave this research back to them and they accepted it and they said, well, we want Beacon and we want Beam. So we're going to give you 60 million for Beacon and we're going to give you another 20 million for Beam and it's not been developed. So that's how we ended up with the $80 million uh, offer. And after months of, um, you know, once they made the official offer, which is through a term sheet, uh, we looked at it. And unfortunately, what happened, JR, is that our technology progressed quite dramatically. In fact, uh, it's much, um, unfortunately for them, um, it, it's a lot more robust than, than even when you and I talked last time. You know, we, we had issues on mm -hmm. our previous call that are completely gone. And we felt that the valuation was no longer valid. And we also are about to release our paid version. So we are going to be a revenue producing company in just a few months. So we walked away from that and said, wow. no. 80 mil that's 80 million American. 80 American. million American. And, you know, uh, for your audience to realize what it meant to me, uh, I own almost on a fully diluted basis, almost 70% of the company. Oh wow! So, so to me, it was a, it would have been a, you know, 50 some up million dollar payday, but that's not why I'm doing this, JR. I'm doing this sincerely and honestly, because I want to elevate the state of visual communication in the world. There's no reason for people to be using platforms that are substandard. And I'll include all competitors on that, not just the one that you were mentioning before, uh, indirectly. And, uh, and that's, that's what motivates me. And I think that we may be talking about billions in, in value in just the next few years. So why do that at this stage? It doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Well, as I offered, um, last episode, um, uh, Angel, 
still stands. You can adopt me anytime you want to. I mean, I'll be, I'll be more than happy. But that's uh, the funniest thing you've ever said. Uh, so we're too close to age for that. <laughs> hey, it you know a little paperwork. You know, I'll put I'll put in the, I'll put in the, the the time to fill it up. You know. But, um, I, 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 listen, I appreciate I appreciate the joke, and I know what you mean by that. Um, you know, I once, uh, if I, can I share a little story with absolutely, your with your audience? Absolutely. Uh, when I was in my, um, I was in my thirties, early thirties, I met with a prominent billionaire uh, that had that had made. Okay, I, I guess I can mention him. It's no secret. Uh, his name is Len Reggio, and he was not only was he the founder, the creator, and the founder of Barnes and Noble, but he also created GameStop, which that's how I got to meet him through GameStop. Mm -hmm. And we were at his house at the Hamptons, and he wanted to meet me for for reasons that are beyond this conversation. And we instantly connected. It was like, you know, it, it was instantly I liked him, and instantly he liked me. And he, he told me, he said, you know, I'm going to share something with you. I haven't shared with many people because many people don't get it. But he said, life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I, that was like electric shock for me. And it changed the way I perceive myself and I perceive my businesses. And because of that, JR, because of that belief that he instilled with that one phrase, I can turn away, you know, I can turn $56 million or whatever the number may, may have been and still be joking about it, JR, with you on wow. the show. <laughs> Jeez. Life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That is. That's, that's deep. That's, that's deep. deep. That, that, mm -hmm. is, that is deep. Uh, I also understand that you have, um, with the development of this, that you have, um, Patents pending. I mean, did I hear right? That yeah. You, no, we have four two patents. patents and two still pending right now. Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, we have two patents that were, have been approved on our technology. Then we have two, one that we should hear pretty soon on because the reviewer had some questions or the examiner, as it's called in this case. Uh, had some questions that Theodore and I answered and our attorneys uh, forwarded it. And we, you know, we, we're, we're cautiously optimistic that we'll get that patent. And then we have been assigned an examiner for the last one. He had some questions. Uh, Theodore and our attorneys are going to, to answer those questions. And by the nature of the questions, it looks like we may get that patent too. So I don't know how Theodore feels about it. We haven't talked about it. But those questions are really clarifications and not and not declining or or, or basically right. uh, um, you know invalidating our assertions for the technology. So you you guys aren't you're you're not duplicating anything. You're innovating. You're coming up with new ways of doing things, new technologies, and that says it within itself. I mean, with patents pending, you are creating a new way of doing things. Inventing. So the term and in, in legal term will be we are we are inventors. Theodore and I are in each of those patents. Uh, sometimes he led some, one of them, uh, some of the patents were more his ideas. Some of the patents were both, but we both cooperated. We both talked about it. Theodore's an engineer, so he can put it down in writing a lot better than I can. And we're both credited equally for, for, for the patents. And yes, you're right in the sense that we did take an existing platform and an existing format and an existing standards, and then we elevated it beyond what anyone else has done before. It's very easy just to take the platform and use it and say that you're innovating, right? Because you have a mm -hmm. competitor and all that. That's what everybody else is doing. But we took the long road. Bear in mind, JR, and this is very important, Beacon took six years to develop. That's not a short, short period of time. No one does that. And because we're private, we were able to do that and invest the time and effort. And there were lots of headaches and lots of times that I thought we could not achieve uh, the goal. And in fact, uh, anytime I, somebody asks me, I, I have a standard answer. They think it's a joke. It's not a joke. It's true. But we discovered the thousand ways of how not to develop video conferencing. There's only one right way. By the way, all our competitors are in the thousands. <laughs> so we got the one way of doing it right. So I, I maybe I'm a little bit too, 
you know, maybe I drank the Kool-Aid. But so I'm you telling did. you right now, there's nothing like Beacon in the marketplace. Not so that I've seen. You discovered a thousand ways not to do it. Uh, how not to do it, yes. Okay. <laughs> now, I really like the name Beacon. And, and it, Beacon is that, that light and Beacon X, you know, that experience of, right. of, of using a product. And it's just an amazing product. J and JR, you know, that that's interesting that you mentioned that because that really is the platform and the motor that drives the whole, it's like kind of the engine that drives the whole entire entire development for us. Uh, we're constantly asking ourselves, what is the experience of the user? We're very user driven. I think that comes from our overlap into video games and the interactive entertainment industry, but we're very much uh, want to know what the experience is like. So I'll give you an example. We recently did a poll and we asked people We've had nearly 200 people already respond to this poll, uh, and we only targeted a small group of people uh, that are Beacon users to uh, to go into this poll. And it was random, it was small. And we've had nearly, you know, I, I can't remember, 190 people, 200 people respond. And and 86% of of the respond of the respondents. Uh, said that the Beacon experience for them is better than any other thing that they've ever used, all the other platforms. Then 20 some up percent said that it was par at par, which by the way, that's still a big accomplishment for a small yeah. company competing with these large, I mean, you're talking Microsoft Teams, sure. Cisco, WebEx, Zoom that we didn't mention earlier, I'll mention them now. Uh, you know, uh, Blue Jeans from Verizon. There's lots of competitors out there. There's Google Meets, you know, and so even that was an accomplishment. Four people said that they, the experience was worse. Four out of 200. And Theodore and I contact all four of them to find out how can we make your experience better? What went wrong? We want to correct it for you. Now, you tell me that if that was Zoom or Microsoft Teams or anybody, that the CEO of the company is going to contact you and say, what went wrong? We want to fix it. Wow. I rest my case. <laughs> I figured I figure those four people might have worked for a competitor. So, No, but, no, no. no. They actually okay. ended up having a, a particular good conversation problem. With yeah. Right. There was, it, and it was, here's the problem with this. It was a one-time problem. But we live and die by first impressions. Very we got to get it right every single time, at least that first time they connect. And that's what happened in all those four cases. Well, as, as and it's just an amazing story. I mean, Angel, you're definitely a serial entrepreneur. And, and for those listeners who have not listened to episode number 28 yet, okay? 28, I've uh, been 24 before. <laughs> yeah. But, 28, I got it wrong. <laughs> but I think a lot of your ability to create these things is coming from the gaming world. I mean, you created you know, G-Tribe. You you created that, right. correct? We created G-Tribe. Uh, well, I started, I started in interactive entertainment after my career in investment banking. But I started by, by uh, uh, in fact, Kimberly, our, our, our CMO, and I started a website uh, called Adrenaline Vault. And it was the first uh, world-class review site for games and for video games. And we just, you know, we, we were retiring from our investment banking days and we just wanted something fun to do. And it ended up being this huge global success. And with that, uh, by interacting with, with a whole new mentality of people that are gamers, uh, which is over 100 million PC gamers in the U.S., by the way, <laughs> in the world, is, um, it, it, the world is 1.4 billion or something like that that are hardcore PC gamers. Mm -hmm. So, um, and hardcore means they're all in, like that's their life. And um, um, we, we, you know, I had, you know, I had this idea that I could, you know, why not present video game competitions as a professional sport? And with that, Kimberly, she's an athlete. She was an athlete before. She's like, let's do it. Why not? You know, <laughs> with that kind of research, we launched the first esports league in the world called the CPL or Cyber Athlete Professional League. It was a runaway, um, runaway success. And the process, we created a almost $5 billion industry now. 
Sam, like I said, a serial entrepreneur. Now, in your in your G tribe, how many how many members or how many people involved with that one? Uh, so that's a niche because uh, it's all P PC gamers, and you know the way to think of uh, G tribe, it's like um, it's the digital counterculture. It's not okay. mainstream; it's the counterculture there. And these are people that really dislike advertising and and have you know banner um, you know ad suppressors and they just block all the ads and uh, and they they just a very niche market and we just crossed 5.7 million uh, you know last week we think we're gonna hit about six million by the by the beginning of next year so. And that's a very significant number for a very difficult audience to reach. And we've never advertised at JR. There's not wow. one ad you can find anywhere. So if you hear about it, somebody told you about it, like I'm telling you and I'm telling your audience. Yep. And it's called G Tribe or and, Gaming you know, Tribe. And I had heard of it uh, before our first interview. And um, well, I, I've looked into it a little bit more. Just, it's just amazing. Like I said, Angel, you know, no, no BS. I mean, you are just your accomplishments. Uh, your your focus is just mind blowing. The uh, and you're not done yet. You're not done yet. So, tell us a little bit about this new uh, Beacon Max that's going to launch it. Beacon Max. So Beacon Max is, um, it's basically science fiction turned into reality. It's having an Think about, think about having a, an AI on board with you all the time as you're talking uh, to someone. And this um, machine intelligence, as we refer to it in our patent, by the way, uh, is there to facilitate everything from rescheduling a call to uh, adding another person to a hole to all these tedious, nonsensical processes that we have to endure. Uh, with other platforms of clicking here, doing this, and you know, and 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 taking a, a blood sample in the process, we just make it very very simple. And then uh, that's the one that will support 4K and 8K resolution, uh, Beacon Max. That's the one that will have a number of innovations that, quite frankly, no one has ever seen before. And you were you were you know you saw um, a little bit of a of a um of a you know a video that 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 we have in the and that we have not disclosed yet uh and we will uh and then we have several other ones that we're doing um and that is um it shows um onboard translation by by sammy with that go away uh that is our um you know that's our built-in ai and you can ask her to translate and then she'll ask you what language and then you can continue talking on your and your native language if that's if it's your native or your favorite language and she translates at the same rate as you're talking which is the big accomplishment here uh wow. the accomplishment is not adding translation because that already exists is mm -hmm. how we were able to accelerate that translation so that it seems like you have an interpreter uh, talking right, to you right there with you all the at time. the same time. Okay, I, I want to talk about that because tell you the truth, that's one of my favorite functions. Having the opportunity to travel in different places of the world, do business with with people across the world, the globe. It's just so neat to not have to hire a translator or or, or depend on are you getting the, an accurate translation. Before we get into that, tell me a little bit more about Sammy. Now, Sammy stands for what and what all? So, sure. so, so one of the things that we realized was that people are, they're getting a little bit more used to the, to sort of the voice activated AIs, um, you know, like Siri and, and, you know, and all these other ones that, that are out there. And, but they still really, it's a very synthetic re relationship in the sense that, you know, that they don't manners <laughs> they don't have basic manners okay. and, and so um when we designed sammy which stands for socially advanced machine intelligence uh we gave her manners if you say thank you she'll say you're welcome and you know just normal stuff and wow. and 
wow, does that make a difference? It feels like almost like, like she's human. I don't even think about her as AI anymore. I think of her as, you know, just another person is on the call. It's just that she's invisible and she only appears when she's invoked, like she just did. Although your audience, I don't think will hear it, her. When she came on, there was a visual um, representation of our logo. And um, yeah, that's, um, uh, it's it's mind blowing. Uh, uh, people, you know, they, that's one thing that, that people love about, about uh, uh, when they interact with, when they see it, they're like, wait a second, you know, this is next generation. This is not, no one has that. So, and we do have a patent pending for that, by the way. Okay, so you have AI that's integrated into the system, and her name is Sammy, and she has manners. Right. And I'm assuming does she, depending on on who you are, and if, and if you're, it's programmed to do so. Does Sammy speak multiple languages? I mean, if you're sitting in Germany or Spain or someplace else, and you use the platform, can you also use Sammy? Uh, if it, right now she speaks primarily English, but yes, um, there's eight languages that we can have Sammy um, uh, respond in and, uh, and interact with, which are the romance languages that you and I are familiar with, JR, since we mm -hmm. both speak Spanish, and that's Portuguese, obviously French, and Italian are, are the, you know, there's also Romanian, but we do not, uh, we, she doesn't speak Romanian yet. And then we also have English, of course. And so that's five languages. And then we have Russian and Chinese and Chinese, I mean, Mandarin. Okay. So, so those are the, so th those are the first, uh, am I, on German and German, German, excuse me, that's the eighth and German. And then we, um, and, and from there, as Klingon, people need is she going to speak Klingon anytime soon? Well, if people want to, we can try it because it's a it's an established language. So <laughs> it'd be fun. I would. I mean, would I you actually say, would like to? I would like to program her to do that just for the fun of watching her speak Klingon. When you so, said this uh, is the future, have, I mean, I this do is have a the friend future. That, I do have a friend that speaks fluent Klingon. Klingon. So it'd be interesting to see if we can fool him by. Uh, Having the AI. <laughs> well, well, uh, Angel, you definitely have a different group of friends than I do. <laughs> oh if yeah, flowing, well, he's Klingon. Well, he he's a smart guy though. Like, don't 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 minimize him. He is the uh, oh no, he has no, a no, PhD. He has a PhD in mathematics and is a a math professor. And actually, uh, we met him. Kimberly, and I met him through the CPL. He was one of the volunteers there. And uh, Colin, uh, Colin is his name. And he is, and he just. He's a fan of the work and he taught himself Klingon. He was learning Greek. He said, might as well just learn Klingon while I'm at it. And he speaks Klingon. There you <laughs> With go. The heart, you know that Klingon has those heart kind of, I don't know if you remember from the show. It has those sharp sounds like, right. doesn't <laughs> Good for him. It's kind of like for Latinos as we roll our R's that everybody can't make in that Klingon. Oh, not sound. everybody, but people, people, you have to get that right. There's several sounds in Spanish that are a little bit harder for people that are not trained with, you know, it's everything is about training your mouth, right? So um, I really, when, I, when my parents told me, I, you know, I was born in New York City, as you know, JR. And when my parents told me moving to Puerto Rico, I was not happy with that. And I have to tell you, there's not a day that goes by that, that I do not appreciate me living in Puerto Rico for a few years so that I could learn Spanish properly. Mm -hmm. And the nuance and the beauty and the, po and the poetry of a beautiful, robust language is definitely is an advantage. And it actually changes the way you think when you can speak more than one language. So Now, speaking Spanish properly in Puerto Rico, well, he, oh, that's an argument we can have later on, but okay. That uh, I did I, not speak. Listen, I, I, my my accent has has definitely um, declined because I don't practice. But um, I learned proper Spanish, not okay. Puerto well, Rican cool. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Nothing so against learned, Puerto Rican Spanish. I was, just I was actually being trained by the Catholic Church at the time, and everybody was from Spain, so I learned proper Spanish. And uh, and and yes, it was made fun of a little bit in Puerto Rico because you know. Uh, they pronounce R's as L's there and, and all that. But uh, now mm -hmm. I speak that way too. So it's ridiculous because I went through all this training for proper Spanish and, and my Mexican friends, when I go to Mexico, they make so much fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, I'm serious. It's embarrassing. They, they actually think, they actually say that I actually don't sound Puerto Rican, they, that I sound Cuban. 
in Spanish because, you know, I'm assertive. And that's not necessarily a Puerto Rican characteristic. It's more of a Cuban characteristic. And it happens that my family is from both Cuba and Puerto Rico. So it's interesting that I may have the DNA for that. And, and they start making fun of me. They'll start imitating me. Like I, they sound like uh, like uh, Scarface. <laughs> totally <laughs> Say hello Scarface. to my little friend here. <laughs> Well, it it's uh, yeah. The, the the whole language thing just just fascinates me. Let me ask you this question, um, and for the listeners out there, because I've seen some some videos and some previews of it. So you can have how many people on on a call can be on one call that speak different languages? I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Well, okay. Um, I'm not sure. sure that there's any limit. I mean, okay. there's a natural limit. There's four, eight different four, languages you have right now. Eight. So, okay. Eight so, languages. Let, so, let's just... so we have limits if you're on free or you're on um, on 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 Beacon Max. I'm not sure that we can have a hundred people speaking okay. different languages, but maybe we can. Can we or not? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yes. Let, let yes. Give... So so Theodor just told me yes. We can okay. have up to a hundred people speaking different languages. Wow. So just for arguments or for illustrations, like you can be on a call, let's say there's five people on the call and everybody speaks a different language. So you can- Yes, when we started working on the technology, this is very early, uh, we had uh, four people on a call mm -hmm. and it was Theodore who chose to speak Russian, I think. Maybe he spoke to, uh, he speaks several languages. Maybe he, he did Portuguese. I can't remember. And then Veni, who is one of our, uh, our senior um, software engineers, he was speaking, I think he was the one who was speaking Portuguese. So Tidor was speaking Russian. And then we had uh, Andrew Sain, who was in charge of our graphical design. He was speaking German. And I was in English, although I could have done Spanish. I, it didn't occur to me at the moment. And we were communicating with each other perfectly. So, yeah, it's possible. So It the, changes the world. I mean, this is a big thing. No, not that's a because big, it's, it's huge. It's yeah, huge. It changes the world. It just no. makes it think about it from even inviting. You do, you do lots of events, right? Mm -hmm. And you can invite so any, anyone on a, on a video call to speak at an event and having the translation done automatically I mean, with you having like, to have a like person the there. It's like the UN with all these. Yeah, we actually, with... I actually, interesting enough that you mentioned that one uh, person that I'm talking to is making a presentation at the UN to test uh, Beacon Max when it comes out and see if the UN is interested in actually using it uh, for some of their languages. So, uh, you know, that's that's running before we can walk. But I wouldn't mind the trial. So, so How cool yeah. is that? How cool is that? Well, Angel, I can't believe... by the way, Jr. Especially with Russian, since there's a lot of tension now because of the Ukraine-Russian situation, uh, they find, you know, I don't know if you realize that Russian is probably, arguably, the most difficult language to learn and and definitely to speak properly. A lot of nuance. A lot of a lot of different meanings to the same thing. Well, Mandarin, and Chinese, Mandarin interesting, Chinese. Mandarin Chinese. No, is not no, that no. Easy Mandarin either. is not. Russian. No, but yes, Mandarin has different tones, but Russian is considered harder to learn. In fact, if you are not born in Moscow or in Russia and you learn Russian, you, I've never heard anybody that learned Russian say they speak Russian. They say I can understand it, I can almost speak it, but no, you have to you have to be born in that country to speak it properly. That being said. Can you imagine having a built-in uh, AI that actually is trained by the nuances of the language translating so you can speak properly with these people without having to have a person that has to be have the clearance and all that and have just a private AI. The way that we built Beacon is very interesting, but, but um, we can isolate it and completely have it completely private just for the purposes of a call like this, it, it's, it's a game changer. We Amazing. can actually put it on a device and, and we actually do. So it's really a game changer. And I'm very excited about that too, JR. It just, it takes the whole entire industry to a whole different level.
you guys have just made the world even smaller. That's and, the plan. And yeah. communication. And I tell you, uh, I've been very fortunate, very blessed. I've, I've been to China 13 times and I've been trying to learn Mandarin Chinese. I did find a direct correlation though. The more rice wine I drank, the better my Mandarin. <laughs> at but least in your mind. <laughs> at least in my mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask your Chinese friends if that was true or not. <laughs> well, since I was buying, they kind of went along with it. Oh, they went they, along, you know, yeah. They pretended they understood me. But anyway, hey, Angel, we're Angel Munoz, ladies and gentlemen. It just uh just an amazing individual. Uh the accomplishments that you and your team have have, have done are just mind-boggling. I mean, to me, just to wrap my head around would you say eight? 8 8k or 8 hd or uh, yeah 8k even, resolution 8k know. resolution i can't even imagine the, stand, the highest standard right now is 4k yeah so it's we're twice yeah. as, as twice as, as it's like being there in person and just declare right right um but this is it, not bad i mean what we're having no, no, right no. now I, you no. know you're basically in my office so there there you go and i'm glad you see you straightened up for me when, for for me coming over that's right uh, my <laughs> office my office is a little bit more of a mess right now but before we before we go, uh, is there anything you would like? I mean, Beacon uh, Max coming out in October. Right, I'm October. very excited about that. And just can you give us an idea of, of what that price point is going to be? When, fourteen ninety five, fourteen ninety five a month. And as I mentioned, for those of you that you really should listen to the other interview because um, we talked about something interesting that Beacon Max will have that we have not touched here, but go to the other interview and you'll hear that it also allows you to call uh, any landline or uh, or mobile device directly from Beacon. And that's unheard of. No one has that unless you're willing to pay more. So for wow. $14.95, you basically have a calling service too that you can call, you know, Mexico in your case, JR, let's say if you have family there and it's all included in the $14.95. I mean, I paid more than that for a pizza last night. I mean, yeah, uh, but you always you get you always get the extra largest. You need to not stop. You need to start watching that. <laughs> <laughs> All them carbs. All them carbs. One one so, thing. So no, uh, you're right. It it's but but fourteen ninety five is a month though. So it's it is a commitment. Although we do so, what we did, Jr. I'll leave. I'll let something out on your show that no one knows yet. But we, um, so we, we went to we we went to the core audience of people who were really using Beacon a lot, and we invited them to go on a waiting list that was actually had a a cut a cutoff, so it wasn't like open you know in, infinite, and our goal was to try to attract ten thousand people to to get on the waiting list for Beacon Max in a month. And in basically eight or nine days, you know, Theodore probably remembers more than I do, but a little over a week, we had the 10,000 people signed up, which, by the way, blew his mind and blew my mind because we didn't realize that people were that interested. So what we have not announced is that they're going to get an offer that all people, I don't know if you're on that list, JR, but if you're not, you should definitely let me know because we, you want to get on that list. And the reason why is they're going to get an offer better than anyone else will be able to get on beacon it is a bunch of months which i can't say exactly right now because we haven't announced it for the 1495 so you'll have plenty of time to to it's an it's it's an industry unique because no one ever does it like that so so if when when it comes out in october i can tell you this it'll be 2023 before you even think about having to to extend this the free the subscription or not? Kind of like those so it's it's, a, it's, an, a, it's a phenomenal offer. So I'm it's super like, excited about it. It's kind of like so. those furniture commercials. Buy now and don't pay until. Okay, yes, I get exactly, it. I get, exactly. I, but in this case, in this case, you're not accumulating anything. It is actually free. Wow. So is, and you don't have to commit. You don't have to commit afterwards if you decide that you do not want uh, the subscription after the months that it will be. Uh, that's fine too. Even better. And, and Angel, I got to confess, uh, I saw that offer. I go, okay, I'll get to it. I got busy. I'll get to it. Next thing you know, we're filled. I go, 
Dang, that was quick. I'll send, so, I'll send you. I'll send you my. I have a link. I'll send it to you, and you'll be able to sign up immediately. Well, well, well. Thank you for that. But I just want to say it was just amazing how quickly ten thousand people. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't believe thing. it. It was really kind of weird because um, we never really. I can't remember ever having to ask people to sign up for something they're going to have to pay and for them to react. So we, and and to top it off. People felt that they wanted, they needed to email me about it to thank me for the opportunity to be on that list. People are thanking you ahead of time when they're getting about to give you money. That's cool. Money. Yeah. That's cool. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you'll be able to monetize this thing after all these years of, uh, of development. development yeah. And Angel D and your team, I mean, <sighs> congratulations. Kudos. Thank you. And on behalf of humanity, thank you. I mean, geez, you, you guys have, are going to make communication so much simpler. And Sammy is an amazing feature that we talked about in episode number 28. If you all go back about there, how she can move from device to device and, and do so much for you. But uh, we're just about out of time. So, uh, Angel, I always like to give uh, guests an opportunity. Anything you'd like to leave us with before I go into the sign off? Uh, JR, yes, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me on the show again. I really appreciate what you do for not only for humanity, but also for the Latinos in 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 the world and especially in texas so thank you so much for having me on the show well i i, I only have one response to that is Orale, okay i'm there i, I am there dude. i'm doing my job for, for those job. that are american speakers <laughs> and do not and speak only english that was a very mexican expression <laughs> not a puerto rican one but a mexican expression. okay hey angel muñoz uh a serial entrepreneur, innovator, uh, future dad when he adopts me. Thank you so much for, be <laughs> for being on the podcast. Uh, you're listening to, uh, my name is J.R. Gonzalez, and you're listening to the Latino Business Report. Guys, if you like what you hear, give us a like. Uh, follow us. You can listen to Latino Business Report anywhere you find podcasts. Or you can also go to latinobusinessreport.com, find out some more information, some behind the scenes, and some upcoming guests. Once again, Angel Muñoz serial entrepreneur and just an amazing individual thank you very much and angel we hope to get you back on the podcast one of these days again soon when you create something new and even better that's right i, I would love that thank you JR. all right guys till next time <laughs>